I'm thankful for a heart that would love to serve the Lord. Amen. That's what God's looking for. That's right. And for somebody to be able to serve. I believe the Bible says, I might just turn and read it before we get started. Brother Billy, would you give me uh, a song? I believe it's out of the Lord, lead this way. Psalms 81 and 6. Jesus said here in John, the fourth chapter, Brother Jacob, 21, if you don't care for me. Jesus saith unto her, this is the woman that was at the well. Jesus saith unto her, Believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain, nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. He was foretelling the destruction that was coming on the land. You worship, you know not what. She was a Gentile woman. That would have been offensive to a lot of people. You got it wrong. Well, that ain't the way it is. A lot of people get offended by that. Every way of man's right in his own eyes, the Bible says, but the Lord ponders the heart. He knows the difference, don't he? Amen. Man looks on the outward appearance, but God looks way down in our hearts to see what's really there. He knows every one of us here, don't That's right. You worship, you know not what. That, that didn't discourage this woman. We know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews. Aren't you glad it ain't that way today? Amen. That's right. We know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews, Jesus told us. Thank God there was going to be a change. Amen. Thank God, Brother Jacob, salvation was going to come the Gentiles' way. Amen. That's right. The 23rd verse. But the hour <coughs> cometh, and now is when the true worship. That's what we're in. We're in a worship service, aren't we? Yeah. The true worshiper. That's what I want to be. I want to be a true worshiper. To worship the Father in the Spirit and in truth. That's how you got to do it. You have to do it both. You can't have the Spirit without the truth. It won't work. That ain't the Spirit. Because the, the Holy Ghost is the Spirit of truth, isn't it? You have to worship God in the spirit and in truth. We praise God in song. We praise God in different forms. The trees blooming, the trees dying. Everything God made praises him because it does just exactly what God put it here to do. But we worship God when we do it in spirit and in truth, don't we? For the Father seeketh such to worship him. He's looking for somebody that will worship him in spirit and in truth. Amen. I'm going to do that this morning. Yeah, read that, Brother Bill. Psalms 81.6. 81.6, read it down if you don't care. I read. removed his shoulder from the burden. Yeah, when the Jews were down in bondage in Egypt, God removed his shoulder from the burden, being a slave. God took them people from being slaves. What is a slave? It's when you don't have control. When something else controls you, you're a slave to it. That's right. Read, brother. His hands were delivered from the pot. Yeah, when they were serving in hard bondage, they was crying out for somebody to save them, wasn't it? Brother Landon, read the Exodus 3 and verse 1. You don't care for me. Thank God for the spirit that I can feel. There's a life that we live, aren't they, for the Lord? We have a natural life to live. You got to work. You got to eat. And God expects we us to live that life. But there's a spiritual life you must live too, brothers and sisters. God expects you to live that life. Read, brother Jason or brother Landon. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even forever. Yeah, 
said, Moses, come to the mouth of God, even Horeb, read, brother. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flaming fire out of the midst of a bush. God ain't speaking that way anymore, but he did to Moses. And he yeah, looked, read. And, and he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. It was lit ablaze, Brother Jimmy, but it wasn't consumed. It's still green as it ever was. Moses said, I'll now turn aside to see this sight. Read, brother. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight. You want to see something that God's got for you to see? Do you want to see something? We'll have to turn our side. Quit going the way we're going if it don't please God, and we'll have to turn and head toward the Lord, won't we? Amen. To see anything that God has got for us to see. Read, brother. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see. Just like that prodigal son that spent all he had living for himself. When he turned, the Bible said his father seen him a long way off, didn't he? Yeah, that he had turned and he was coming home. You've got to do that. I've got to do that if we want God to deal with us. We've got to put off what God tell Moses here, but you got to turn toward the Lord. Then yeah, we've lived too long in times past, brothers and sisters. Yeah, we need to live for God now, don't we? Amen. This is what God put on my heart, and that's by the help of God, that's what I'm going to preach this morning. Unless he leads me somewhere else. Read, Brother Lynn. And God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. Yeah, I want God to call my name. Don't you this morning? Amen. I want God to call my name. Amen. Yeah, if I'm, maybe if I'm going the wrong way, I sure want God to call my name and stop me from going down the downward road. But he called unto Moses and he said, Moses, Moses. And he said, here am I. Yeah, here am I, Lord. And he said, draw not draw not nigh hither. You don't come hither the way you are. Put off thy shoes from thy feet. Put off your shoes from your feet, Moses. For the place where thou stand is holy ground. Yeah, the place where you're standing is holy ground. Do you know you're in holy ground this morning? Amen. Yeah, because we're in the presence of the Lord in his house, Amen. in his service. He told Moses not to come nigh unto him until he put his shoes off his feet. We have to take off what we want and put on what God wants us to have. Amen. Those feet of those shoes of Moses took them places. But God didn't want them to go. Those old feet of ours, they used to take us places. God don't want us to be, to do things God don't want us to do. But we've decided to pull off our shoes. Yeah, and start putting on a different pair. Having our feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. They won't take you where you ought not go. They'll take you to the Lord's house. They'll take you to prayer when it's time you need to pray. They'll take you to give thanks when it's time to give thanks. They'll take you to check on your brother and your sister when it's time to check on them. I want those shoes on my feet. Read, brother. Moreover, he said, I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. That's the only real God there is in this world. And his son, Jesus Christ. Everything else can't save, can't deliver, can't heal, can't help our loved ones, can't calm our nerves, can't give us peace of mind. There's no other God under heaven that can do these things for us but the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Amen. When it come time to heal that lame man that was at the gate of the temple, yeah, Peter stretched forth his hand and said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I unto thee. In the name of the Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. He grabbed them by the hand, lifted them up, and he received strength, and he ran and praised God and gave God thanks in the temple. 
They beat the apostles for that. They questioned them and said, we know you didn't do it. He said, by what power or by what name did you make this man to walk? They said, be it known unto you all, the God of our fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has glorified his son Jesus. Yeah, and it's by that man's name, this, this man stands you here whole, having this perfect sound. He went from being a cripple to having perfect soundness in his feet. Through the name of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. By the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And through the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Everything we need, Sister Ira, this morning is in that name. Amen. The name of Jesus. Amen. There's never been another name given among men whereby we must be saved. It goes further than that. That at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Put off your ways, Moses. That's what he was saying. In a time past of our lives may have sufficed us to wrought the will of the Gentiles. When we walked in lust, different things of an old out of nature, a sinful nature. But now God wants us to walk in the light, don't we? Sure he does. Amen. Brother Billy, read that for me. He took off. God went on to tell Moses that he's going to send them down into Egypt because he'd heard the cries of the children of Israel. How they cried for him. Cried to be loose from their burdens. Cried to be tired of being somebody else's slave. Yeah, is there anything got a hold of us? Yeah, that's, that's leading us about. That's being a ruler or master over us, but the Lord. You got to get tired of it. You got to get plumb tired of it that you cry out to God for deliverance. Yeah, like as he did to them, he sent Moses. He'll send his son to you now. He's the only one got deliverance. He can empty those unclean spirits out. Just as much as he did then, he can do it now. You got to get tired of it. You haven't read in the Bible where there's men and women vexed with the devil. They're tired of them. They didn't want them no more. Didn't want to be that person. They didn't want to be around nobody. Didn't want to have nothing to do with nobody. They're vexed with the devil. When it got that way with them, yeah. You know, God sent his son Jesus by their way. Amen. Yeah, to free them from those things, Brother Jason. Amen. But if you're comfortable where you're at, you'll never get delivered. You got to get tired of being the way. If it's not what God wants, I'm not preaching to any individual. I'm preaching what God gives me to say this morning. And the God is here. And the Spirit of God is here. And his son is here. And if you want it, you can have it this morning. Amen. All you got to do is move into the service. That's right. Yeah, from the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violent take it by force. But something changed about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The kingdom of heaven is not meat and drink. Ain't nobody taking it here. Nobody taking over here, are we? It's not meat and it's not drink, but it's righteousness. Peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Right. He that in these things serveth Christ is acceptable unto God and approved unto men. Yeah, I want to be in that kingdom, don't you? Amen. Yeah, Jesus Amen. told his people, Brother Billy, let's all get our minds on the Lord this morning. He, he told them people, Brother Billy, he said, if I by the finger of God cast out devils, no doubt the kingdom of God has come nigh unto you. Amen. He called it the finger of God. Amen. Then he said, if I by the spirit of God cast out the devil. That's what he used to do it. Amen. And it's still here today. 
cast out devils. No doubt the kingdom of heaven has come upon you. Yeah, that finger of God is still here. Amen. Yeah, that old uh, Belshazzar in the Old Testament in the book of Daniel Amen. said it be with the king's cups and the king's plates that come out of the temple of the Lord. But he had a big party and he threw a feast. Yeah, and was really making fun and sport of God's vessels in his temple. And he seen the finger right, start writing over on the wall. Yeah, it was the same finger of God, wasn't it? Yeah, that cast out devils. Did that right. And it said, Mene, Mene, T. Cal Perez. And it was interpreted, Thy kingdom is divided. Thou art weighed in the balance and found wanting. When it comes time to leave this world, I want the balance to be reconciled, don't you? Or nothing against God or man when it comes time to leave this world. That man, Belshazzar, he was weighed in the balance and found wanting. He, he didn't do what he needed to do. He did what he did not need to do. And of course, he was lost. That's a real serious word, lost. That's to never, ever be found again. Now, me, I was lost. I realized I was lost. Mm -hmm. I realized the road I was going was going to lead me to an endless torment. And Jesus saved my soul. He can do that as long as you're living. As long as you got iron breath in you, there's hope for you. Don't ever think you've gone too far where there's, there's nothing God can do for you. But there's iron in those lungs, God can move for you. But if we wait too long, Brother Billy, to start living for him, we'll get into that eternity unprepared to meet God. Amen. When every eye sees the man that bled and died for us, he'll say, Depart from me, he cursed me, into everlasting darkness. Yeah, to fire, everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. You see, God did not make hell for you. Right. He did not create that place for you or me. He prepared it for the devil and his angels. Amen. Yeah, but the thing about it is, but if we won't move and get in where God wants us to be, he said he'd cut a hypocrite asunder, wouldn't he? Yeah. And cut us asunder and give us our portion with the hypocrite. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. We don't have to go there. Ain't nothing God don't want you to go there. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob wants you to be with him. Amen. He's crying out this morning, Son, give me thine heart. Amen. Anybody that will can have it. Ain't that wonderful? Amen. Anybody that will give God his heart can have all that God has got. That's right. But if you're Lord. not giving all of you to him, why well, expect him to give all of himself to you? He wouldn't. Yeah, he heard their cries, and he sent Moses to deliver them. All right, brother, read. Thou callest in trouble, and I delivered thee. Yeah, thou callest. This is back to Psalms 81, 7. Thou callest in trouble, and I delivered thee. I answered thee in the secret place of thunder. I proved thee at the waters of murder. Yeah, they complained against Moses. After God had showed his great power, Think back on our lives. How much has God showed his power to us? I've seen it in action. Amen. I've seen God moving in this. Amen. That's right. Amen. I've seen God healing in this. Amen. That's right. Thank you, Lord. Amen. They'd seen Moses stretch his hand out over the sea. Amen. And told them, stand still. That's a lot of people trouble. They want to fix things themselves. Mm -hmm. right. It takes God to fix that what's inside of us. Amen. Amen. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you'll see no more. They wasn't ever going to bother them again, Brother Jacob. Amen. They smote Amen. the water and the Red Sea parted. The Israelites went over on dry ground. The Egyptians tried to follow, and God closed the water up on them. Amen. 
They seen that happen. They were hungry. And God rained down the manna from heaven and gave them food to eat. They come to these waters and they murmured against God. They murmured against Moses. They got to thirsting for something natural more than believing what God had told them that he was going to lead them to a land flowing with milk and honey Amen. that drank us off of the rain from heaven. They were heading to that land and God told them he was going to bring them <laughs> into the land that came. But they got to thirsting for something natural. Doubting what God had already promised them. They didn't have faith, did they? So they murmured against God and against Moses. And in Numbers, the 20th chapter, Moses went before the Lord. And it displeased God that Moses went before him and asked for them rebels. But he told him, you go out and you take the rod and you smite it, and it will bring forth water. So that displeased God that Moses interceded for him. He went out and he smote the rock twice and it came living water out of that rock. And they drank water from the rock. Yeah, but the thing of it is, God had already told Moses, I'm going to lead him. You're going to take him to the promised land. What has God told us? How many times have we heard sermons that spoke just to us? that says, are oh, you going to make it? Amen. And you leave the church house with all kinds of strength and energy, and you feel like I'm going to make it. There ain't going to nothing stop me. I'm going to make heaven my home. Then a few weeks later, you don't know whether you're going to make it or not. I'm telling it right. I've been there. Amen. You think God has left you here for such but just like then, God ain't to take his people. What he said he'd do, he's going to do. He cannot lie. It's up to us to take him at his word and believe it with all our heart. When the storms are raging, still believe that God's going to move. When we don't see no way out, still feel like God is going to make a way out. Regardless of whatever happens in this natural life, realize God has promised us a home. Where there is no pain, no death, no sorrow, no crime. Whatever may come against you that you got to face, God has still made those promises to us. Why do we worry of what God, we feel like God's left us when he said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. He ain't left us. They murmured against him. Rick brother. Hear all my people. Hear all my people. And I will testify unto thee. O Israel, if thou wilt hearken unto me. Oh, if you'll just hearken unto me. There shall no strange God be in thee. Neither shalt thou worship any strange God. What is a strange God? It's an idol. There's a lot in that word, strange God. Him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, but him that sin. That covers a wide area. What would a strange God be? Anything we put before the real God of heaven, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, we're making it a God unto us. When you know not to do wrong and you do it anyway, you're choosing that over God and his word. Read, brother. There shall no strange God be in thee. There shall no strange God be in thee. Neither shalt thou worship any strange God. It right here is where it gets. If it gets you, whatever it is, it gets in that heart. It's in you. Just as much as it's in you, both to will and to do of God's good pleasure, it's in you to do what the thing that's leading you, telling you to do, that's made you a slave. Read, brother. I am the Lord thy God, which 
which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. I am the Lord thy God. He's mine this morning. Amen. He's Lord. He's mine this morning. Amen. I serve him. Amen. And he is mine. Amen. That's the way we all ought to be. And I trust that you are this morning. Amen. Paul said you're no more your own. But you're bought with a price. If he bought you, then he owns you. You're his. And he's yours. I am thy, the Lord thy God. Read Brought brother. thee up out of the land of Egypt. Read, brother. Open thy mouth wide and I will fill it. You get hungry? Amen. He said open your mouth wide mm -hmm. and he'd fill it. Amen. That's what he said. Amen. Amen. Read, Amen. brother. My people would not hearken to my voice. They wouldn't listen to him. And Israel would not have me. They didn't want none of his reproof. They didn't want none of God. That's what he Amen. said. Amen. What did he do? So I gave them up to their own hearts. I gave them up to their own hearts. But and they walked in their own counsel. They walked in their own counsel. That is 14 and 14 for me, Brother Bill. They walked in their own counsel. We all walk there at one point or another. Amen. And our times pass and lives pass. But what I want to get on your mind this morning is let's let the past be the past. That's right. Amen. Today is the day of salvation. Amen. Let's live for today and live for tomorrow. We ain't living for the past or in the past. Amen. That's right, brother. We're living for the future, for the present. What do I mean? You can't change anything that's happened in the past. That's right. It's gone like a wind. Like the vapor. It's gone. You cannot change anything that you had done back there. Only thing you can do is get forgiveness and cleansing for it. Then the most important thing is God said your sins and iniquities will I remember no more. Once you get the cleansing for that, God don't remember anything of your past. None of it. It's impossible for God to lie. Hebrews, before we go any further, Brother Jacob, put up Hebrews, the sixth chapter. You don't care for me in about... I think it's about the 18th verse, if I'm not mistaken. If I need to look it up, I can. There it is. That by two immutable things, that's unchangeable. The word immutable, if you look it up, is unchangeable. And that makes me proud. He said, I am God, and I change not. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today and forever and ever. He does not change. That by two unchangeable things. One was God the Father. I am God. I change not. One was God the Son. Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today and forever. They do not change on me. Your friends might change and decide never to hang around with you anymore. Your family might change and decide they don't want to do it nothing to do with you anymore. But the Bible says, when my mother and father forsake me, the Lord will take me up. It don't matter. We've got a God that will not change on us. That by two immutable things, is that, what are they, Brother Billy? Which when, when the apostle Barnabas and Paul. Read that up there on the, the thing for me, and I'm going to try to find the page. But to, by two immutable things, I'll make it a little bit plainer. I'm sorry. In which it was impossible for God to lie, we might have a strong consolation. Now it's impossible for God to lie to us. If you really realize that in your heart this morning, that God can never tell you a lie, He can never change. Now he swore that he was going to destroy Nineveh. And he repented of the evil because they repented unto him. God can't change. We said, well, he just said he did change.
God's promised you and promised me. We ain't ready to meet him. When we leave this side of life, he's promised you an eternity in the lake of fire. Amen. But he's promised you if you'll believe in him, if you'll serve him, if you'll ask him and his son to forgive you and to cleanse you, he's the same God has promised you. If you'll do that, an eternity in heaven. Amen. He don't change. He, he means what he said. But I want to go to heaven and not to that awful place. Because we know it's impossible for God to lie, we might have strong consolation. But it don't seem like everything's going to work out. And it don't seem like this way is worth traveling. When you get down and you get low, you can still have a strong consolation. Right. That that God that started you out in faith will not leave you. Amen. And he won't lie to you. Amen. That's enough, brothers and sisters. That's more than enough for you and me to get what God has for us in this life and to make a complete successful journey to the world to come. We who have fled for refuge. That's what they did when they left Egypt. Right. They fled for some refuge because they were slaves down there. Lay hold on the hope set before you. What hope? Yeah, he said, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that, that even besets us. Run with patience the race set before us. Look at our to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross despise the shame and is set down on the right hand of the majesty in the head. And that's the hope that's set before us. We've seen a man make that successful journey and we know he did. Live for the Lord in this life. Crucified in this life. Raised with an eternal body in the world to come. If it's got a hold of you and it commands you when it's time to do, it's wrong. That means you don't have control over it. It's got control over you. Well, he said you'll have no other God before me. Ain't that right? Amen. Acts 14 and 14 now. I just got a little bit. I just got a lot more. But I ain't through. I'm not going to preach it. I promise you just too much. I'm thankful. I don't want to walk in time past. No. I'm ashamed of my time past. I don't want nobody to know what I've done. I don't want to ever revisit. But I ain't ashamed of who I am today. Brother well, Aaron, I ain't ashamed of what God made out of me. I might not be the coolest guy, but I ain't ashamed of me, Chad. You might be ashamed of me when you go out in public with me. I'm not ashamed of you. God ain't ashamed of me. God ain't ashamed of you this morning. We miss you. Just, God just wants you to worship him in spirit and truth. Live for him this morning. All right, Brother Hill. Which when the apostles, the apostles Barnabas and Paul heard of them, they rent their clothes. Some people believe they went to the the 12 apostles. Never was the 12 apostles. So here's, here's two more. Barnabas and Paul, when the apostles, Barnabas and Paul, he called them both apostles, didn't he? Yeah. Heard of, they rent their clothes and ran in among the people. This was when they were going to sacrifice. When Paul had visited this town, he sent a man who was crippled, perceived that he had faith to be healed. And a lot of times that's where it's at, brothers and sisters, if we don't get to live we don't get healed it's our faith is weak not every time because there's some things God just don't heal That's right. yeah. if it was that way the Old Testament said Brother Jonathan he said by his stripes we are healed if that was talking about natural sickness then God would heal everything because his stripes and that blood was shed for this whole world 
and anybody can have it if they want it. That wasn't talking about natural healing. It was talking about that sin sickness that had gripped the world. He let his blood run free to heal us from those things. You know, the things like having an unclean spirit, having a habit that's just not right, having things about us that we don't want no more. He let his blood run free for those things, and he'll heal every one of them. And if we want to be free, he'll do that this morning. Free, brother. He's saying, sirs, why do you these things? He healed that crippled man, and they called uh, Barnabas Mercius and Paul Jupiter, and they were going to sacrifice unto Barnabas and Saul. They brought sheep and things out to the gate of the city and we're going to sacrifice unto them for they said for the gods have come down and are like unto men but Paul restrained them and wouldn't let them do it and this is what he told them. we also are men of like passions with you we're preach. men of like passions with you and preach unto you that you should turn from these vanities we ought to turn from, you ought to turn from these vanities Unto the living God. Yeah, to serve the living God. All them idol gods are dead. Muhammad, Buddha, the Hindu God, every one of them, if you knew where their gods was buried, you could find their bones. That's all that's left of them. are probably by now not even gone. Probably dust. Mm -hmm. But our is a living God Amen. who's never known defeat. Who's given you strength and power, and given you an access to Him through Jesus Christ? Read, brother. Which made heaven and earth. He's the God that made heaven and earth. And the sea. And all, and the sea and all that's there is. Read, brother. Who in time past suffered all nations to walk in their own ways. That's time past. Right. Nevertheless, He left not himself without witness. The entire past God suffered all nations to walk in their ways, but nevertheless he let he left not himself without a witness, even to them people when they didn't have the law. He still gave them a witness that there was a God in heaven. What was his witness, Brother Billy? In that he did good. Yeah, in that he did good unto them. You know he causes it to rain on the just and the unjust. Right. He caused the sunshine on the just and the unjust. Yeah, he left them people with it, not without witness, and that he did good. And gave us rain from heaven. Gave us the rain from heaven. A fruitful season. Fruitful season. Filling our hearts with food and, and gladness. Yeah, filling our hearts with food and gladness. And peace saints, scarce restrained they the people. All right, brother, Billy at 17. And I'm going to, brother Chad, forgive me if you don't care. Philippians 3 and 3. All right, brother, we live in the Acts 17 and 18. Then certain philosophers of the Epicurean and of the Stoics encountered him. And some said, What will this Bible say? And they called Paul a Bible. Other some, he seen it be a setter forth of strange gods because he preached unto them Jesus and the resurrection. That's what made them strange but it didn't make them wrong did it? Acts 17 down in verse 29. For as much then as we, the, we are the offspring of God. If you let me start at 27 I might wind up right here. That they should seek the Lord. Uh, anybody that would, would have. Yeah. If happily they might feel after him. They said to the unknown God and had an altar. They didn't know who he was and they was worshiping him. He's the God of Abraham. He's the God of Isaac. He's the God of Jacob. He's the God of Jesus Christ. And he's the God of the church. Psalm 92, from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. What a little speck of sand I am in the great big hand of a mighty God. He's got all power. The Son of God, God the Son, has all power today in heaven and in earth. All 
time. Every king over every country, every president, every ruler, God put them there. Powers that be ordained of God, whether they be dominions, kings, rulers, whether they be your pastor, your pastors, the ordained of God, he's got all power. The only power that Satan's got is in the light of hell. He tells lies like you ain't worth it, that God don't want you. There's no hope. Anytime you want to make a move for God, you bet your bottom dollar Satan will be right there to resist every step you make. <coughs> the Bible says if you resist the devil, he'll flee from you. That's an unclean spirit. That's that satanic nature that tries to get you to do wrong instead of doing right. Yeah, he's shooting me, Joshua the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord. This is in the Old Testament, the book of Zechariah. Satan standing at his right hand to resist him. They were there to do service right before the angel of the Lord. And Satan was on his right hand to resist everything he'd done. Yeah, but the Lord said unto Satan, The Lord rebuked thee. Yeah, it had come down the time that Jesus was going to leave this world. He told Peter he was going to deny him, Brother Jason. And Peter said, I'll die with you, but I will not deny you. Jesus said, before the cock crows, you shall deny me thrice. But he said something else to Peter. He said, Simon Peter, Satan has desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat, do with you what he wants to. Take all the good out of you. That's what they sift wheat for. It cast all the good out. That's what he wanted to do to Peter, take all the good out of him. But Jesus said, but I've prayed for you, Peter. Let your faith fail you not. When you are converted, strengthen the brethren. And he knew what Peter was going to do. And the Lord prayed for him. Well, he don't have no respect for a person. If you're fighting a battle, if you need anything from God, why not ask Jesus to pray to the Father for you? He will. He'll pray for you. That's all right, brother. Somebody get me Romans 8, Catholic. First reading down to the 27th. I think it's 28. So we are saved by hope. We are saved by hope. The hope that is seen is not hope. And no matter how bad it looks, I still got hope. Amen. Right. No matter how bad it gets, there's still hope. Amen. That tomorrow might be better. Amen. Yeah, that the Lord's going to move. Yeah, but Job. All the things that he went through, terrible things that would break probably just about any man alive. Job got to the place, he said, though he consumed me in the way, yet will I serve him. Well, that's the testimony, ain't it? Amen. All the while, the Spirit of God is in my nostrils. I'll pray. Yeah, think about it. Though he can zoom me in the way, yet will I trust him. I don't want to have that. Don't you want to have more trust? We are saved by hope because there's things that come against us. We're saved by hope because we do get down and we have to fight battles. But we're saved by hope yeah, because we know what's coming at the end of the race. We know what's waiting on us. Read that. Read that. We're saved by hope. The hope that is seen is not hope. The hope that's seen is not a hope. If you can see it, you young got no reason to hope for it. That's right. What a man sees, why does he yet hope for it? You wouldn't have to hope for it. But if we hope for that we see not. In the midst of the storm and struggle of everyday life, just trying to make heaven your home. There's a land somewhere where the people of God are at this morning. Resting forever. By the river of life. There's a land there. I might be struggling down here. And I can't see that place. But I know it's there. Amen. That, say, that keeps me. That saves me, Brother Aaron. When the storms get tough and hard. Amen, brother. I picture my loved one. In that land, I want to go see him. Thank you, Lord. I 
hope for that place that I could never see in this life with these natural eyes. I hope for it. Amen. And if we do that, he said, then do we with patience wait for us. We can endure the trials. We can endure the times God's got for us to hear because we wait on it. Ain't it? Amen. Part of we wait on it. Here we have no continuing city, but we seek one to come. That's right. And it's coming here in a little minute. All right, brother, you got to read. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmity. And that's the Spirit in this verse is Jesus Christ. That's right. He prayed for Peter, and he'll pray for you. Likewise, also, the Spirit helpeth our infirmity. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought. And I say about every time I've ever prayed, I don't really know what I ought to say. And God knows that. That's why Jesus is there. Brother Billy, we don't know what we ought to say. Who had known the mind of the Lord? Or who had been his counsel? Oh, the depth, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. I don't know what to say when I pray, really. But there's a the spirit there with me. Jesus is there with me. What's he going to do? Likewise, the spirit also helps with our infirmity. But yeah. we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit itself makes an intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Yeah, when you pray, Jesus is there to make intercession for you. Thank you, Lord. So like he prayed for Peter that his faith failed not, he'll pray for you too if you ask him. He'll meet you any time and every time you pray. I'll show you that that's the, that is Jesus it said, The Spirit helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us, with groans which cannot be uttered. Now, Brother Jacob, put up Hebrews 7, 25. That Spirit made an intercession, didn't it? Wherefore he, Jesus, is able to save them, he's the only one that can save, to the uttermost, to come unto God by him, seeing he ever lives. Make intercession for them. Amen. The Spirit helpeth thy infirmity, because it maketh intercession for you. Well, it's Jesus is the one making intercession for you. It's like a lawyer. There's a judge. In this instance, God would be the judge. We would be the one on trial. And Jesus would be our mediator, our counselor, the mighty God. And he'd go to his Father. <laughs> On our behalf. And the Lord God will hear us because He always hears His Son. We know that God heareth not sinners. No, He won't. Or well, that man said anyway. And what did Jesus say to that? It was the man that they healed said that. We know that God heareth not sinners. But if any man be a worshiper of God and doeth His will, him to hear, even if he don't hear sinners, he'll hear His Son. I know it will. Jesus said, Father, I thank thee that thou hearest me. I know that you hear me always. So when you're in need, let Jesus go to the Father for you. Anybody else wish to speak this morning? I appreciate everybody coming out to be with us. Our service. There ain't no other word. We'll all stand at the table. Please remember these prayer requests that we put forward. Well, it's kind of gracious to have a father of God for this morning. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you, Lord, for what it means to us in life, Lord, soul. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for all you've given us, Lord, for the mercies of God. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for the sunshine today. Lord, we thank you for all the souls we have in here. Lord, we ask to bless those, Lord, that may be discouraged, Lord, in life and mind and heart. Lord, we ask, Lord, to give us help those that are sick. Lord, we thank you and we praise you, Lord, for all you've given us. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.